Caribbean Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. Dominica mourns the death of five people after their car plunged over a precipice and into the sea. That's our top story in Caribbean Newsline for Monday, August 7. From the CMC News Centre in Bridgetown, I'm Nicole Best. Good evening. Five people were killed when the car plunged over a precipice and into the sea in the north of Dominica on Sunday. Police report that the incident took place along the road between the villages of Penville and Villacase. The names of those killed have not yet been released. The circumstances surrounding the accident are unknown. A secure group, that's a rescue group including police and villagers, was able to brave the rough seas and retrieve the bodies from the wrecked vehicle. Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt, in whose constituency the incident occurred, described it as a tragic incident and expressed his sadness. Opposition leader Lennox Linton also expressed sorrow at the event. Jamaica police are investigating the murder of a 17-year-old student who was shot while she slept at her home on Sunday. While Nicole Moulton died from a gunshot wound to her head, her 12-year-old sister, who was also shot as she was asleep in their home in the corporate area community of Zimbabwe, survived but remains in serious condition. Police say they had information that Moulton was killed because she refused the sexual advances of men in the area. Still in Jamaica, Prime Minister Andrew Holness is satisfied that the country is poised for economic takeoff. In his message on Sunday marking 55 years of independence, he said Jamaica was experiencing a boom in tourism with more than 1.46 billion US dollars in earnings generated from January to June. He said special economic zone regulations are expected to be passed into law soon and should open up significant economic employment opportunities for Jamaicans as well as opportunities for manufacturing, small business development and foreign exchange earnings. Holness added that there was continuous improvement in the growth of the business process outsourcing sector and urged citizens to celebrate the macroeconomic stability and record low inflation rates that have been achieved. We knew the debt trap and double-digit inflation were whittling away our independence, making us more vulnerable to external pressures. Fellow Jamaicans, you have shown the discipline necessary to undertake the reform measures. We have achieved record low inflation rates and have significantly cut our debt to GDP ratio. We now boast a budget surplus after many years of chronic deficits. Jamaica achieved a primary balance surplus of $135.9 billion in the 2016-2017 fiscal year, 7.7% or $12.9 billion above the minimum 7% target. Our independence is being strengthened. We have demonstrated as a people that we are quite able to manage our own affairs and to show economic discipline without social unrest. We now head over to the Cayman Islands where the attorney for former Premier Makiva Bush says the misdemeanor battery charge against the parliamentarian will be dropped. We get more in this Cayman 27 News report. Keith Seltzer says the Florida State Attorney's Office is expected to file the relevant paperwork today or Monday. On July 17th, Mr. Bush was charged with simple battery after a casino employee at the Seminole Casino Coconut Creek alleged he touched her buttocks. He was taken into custody and released the next day on $1,000 cash bond. That's his mugshot right there. His attorney that same day entered a plea of not guilty on his behalf at the Broward County Court. Now, later that week, opposition leader Ezard Miller and his fellow members called for Mr. Bush to step down as Speaker of the House. Mr. Bush said he would not do so, saying that he would be exonerated today. He offered more comment. He said the last few weeks have been very difficult for, me, for both me and my family, and the support we have received has helped us get through these difficult times. The sedition charge against the head of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service Social and Welfare Association, Inspector Michael Seals, has been thrown out of court. 
Seals had been charged with making a seditious statement when he appeared on a television program on June 24, 2015. He had claimed on the program that there was an alleged plot by the ruling People's Partnership government, headed by Kamla Prasad Bisesa, to frustrate the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service to react in such a way that there would be need for a state of emergency, thereby stalling the September 7 general election of that year. Speaking to reporters following the decision by the court to discontinue the matter, Seals said he was extremely happy and wanted to give thanks to God. I want to say that I'm exceedingly happy. I want to give thanks to God. I want to also thank all the person who would have prayed for me. I know a lot of strangers who would have walked up this street. I don't even know their name. I can't even place their face. So they are faceless and they are nameless. I want to thank them because they express the concern that they are in fact going to pray for me. So I want to thank them. I want to also express that um, I hold no malice in my heart towards the, the persons who would have brought the charges and what the persons who played a part in bringing the charges. I have already forgiven them from the inception. So I would want them to not feel in any way that, um, that I hold hold a grudge against them. So that's the approach that I'm taking. I just want to be Michael Field. I want to say that I'm exceedingly happy. I want to give thanks to God. I want but he did not hesitate to call on the commissioner to return him to active duty. But what I would want to put the commissioner on notice immediately is that he needs to reinstate me immediately and more importantly um, to pay my outstanding sums of money. My family would have suffered over the last two years, so it's time for him to make that right. That's the position that I'm taking on, and I will spare no effort in trying to have that result as quickly as possible. Still in Trinidad and Tobago, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley is calling on trade union leaders to return to tripartite talks. The appeal came after Labour leaders publicly criticised the Prime Minister and his handling of the economy. But Rowley says the government is doing its best. CNC3's Ria Rambali has more. As it took to the streets on August 4th, each Labour leader slammed the current PNM government and its leader, Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley, over job losses and his handling of the economy. But the union's cry did not fall on deaf ears. One day later, the PM would respond to the labor movement, saying the government has not turned a blind eye to the stresses and strains exerted on the population, explaining that job and salary cuts are a result of reduced revenues. Dr. Rowley says until the situation is reversed, the government is required to act responsibly and do more with less. Stating that the government acknowledges and respects the labor movement, Dr. Rowley recalls that early on in his administration, steps were taken to establish a collaborative platform of discussion between government, labor and the business sector. The tripartite approach, he says, is a civil one to provide the most meaningful forum to address challenges brought on by the current economic crisis. The government, he says, is hopeful that workers' representatives would acknowledge the reality and return to the tripartite approach rather than, quote, rely on threats, bombast, finger-pointing and insults, end quote, since, he says, they do little to improve the economic situation. Prime Minister Rowley launched the National Tripartite Advisory Council in March of 2016 to work on labor issues and advise on a way forward. However, labor parties pulled out one year later. A surge of asylum-seeking Haitians fleeing the United States amid increasing deportation fears is overwhelming Canadian immigration agencies. And it has forced the opening of the massive Olympic Stadium in Montreal to temporarily house some of the refugees. Prada a government-funded immigrant support program in Quebec said it received 1,200 new requests from refugees in July, almost four times the normal monthly total. Prada leader Francine Dupree said she has never seen this kind of volume or intensity. Dupree said most of the new arrivals or Haitians who fear their temporary resident status in the U.S. will be revoked. The surge in Haitian asylum seekers coincides with the Trump administration's decision in May to grant Haitians only a six-month extension of temporary protection status when it expired on July 22nd. A coalition of immigrant support organizations launched a national campaign in Miami on Monday to call for the temporary immigration protection of the Haitian and Central American community to be maintained. Many Haitians came to the U.S. in the aftermath of the country's massive 2010 earthquake that killed more than 2,000, that's 200,000 people. 
And coming up in Caribbean Newsline, carnival celebrations winding down in two Caribbean islands. Stay with us. There's more news after the break. Join the Caribbean Broadcasting Union and its regional and international partners at the CBU Annual General Assembly, August 21st through 24th at the British Colonial Hilton Hotel in Nassau, the Bahamas, under the theme, Digital Developments in Caribbean Media. Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, Dr. the Honorable Hubert Alexander Minnis, will welcome delegates during the opening ceremony. Guyana's Minister of Public Telecommunications, the Honorable Kathy Hughes, will offer a keynote address on digital developments in the region. See the launch of the UNESCO-sponsored Manual of Social Media Guidelines for Caribbean Journalists with guest speaker, Jamaica's Director of Public Prosecutions, Paula Llewellyn. And hear from international media players about the new developments in digital television standards in Europe, the U.S., and Japan. And this year's Caribbean Broadcasting Awards Gala at the Atlantis Resort Paradise Island is not to be missed. Call 246-430-1007 to book your space in the three-day conference and exhibition. Don't miss the CBU 48th Assembly at the British Colonial Hilton Hotel in Nassau from August 21st through 24th. Discounts on flights to the Assembly on the official airline, Caribbean Airlines. 60 years ago, we started greatness. Now it's time to celebrate greatness. Antigua's Carnival 2017, July 28th to August 8th. Celebrating great pageantry. Mass, Pan, Calypso, Soca. Celebrating culture. Celebrating the Caribbean's greatest summer festival. Antigua's 60th Anniversary Carnival. Powered by Flow. It's Kadumen Day in Barbados, the last lap of the Crop Over Festival. Costumed bands crossed the stage at the National Stadium earlier in the day before making their way down Spring Garden Highway to end in a kaleidoscope of color. A number of international celebrities were among the revelers and there was also a band from Guadeloupe. But on Saturday night, Ian Webster's stage name, iWeb, won the coveted Pico de Crop Calypso title. Carib Update caught up with the new monarch and sent us this report. And that was how it was announced after 11 Calypsonians, including last year's winner Aziza, performed in front of a packed audience at Kensington. iWeb, who performed at number 11, had a very strong first song, The Very Topical Salesman. He spoke to us about the process of getting the song together. The idea of, we have, well, when, when you have elections are called, um, they're, they're pretty much these allegations that flow around about vote buying and selling, you know. And, um, you know, generally listening to the pulse of the people and people on the ground, you know, people were saying, um, them, them looking to... <laughs> <laughs> Sell the vote. Somebody go up. Nobody get paper. iWeb's second song was Pray for the Souls. Uh, we have had a number of road fatalities in Barbados this year, um, especially in the earlier part of the year, and we have seen a few accidents, um, in fact, just last night and so on. So that's really a song to sensitize people about the, the fact that we need to be careful on the roads, you know, pay, pay attention in terms of our driving and such like that. And stuff like that. Another God of life, we pray for the souls. Now Edwin Yearwood plays second with the songs Beggars and Taxi. Oh, I 
Donella was also very impressive and placed third with two strong songs, including Virtual. Her second song was Make a Change. Coming in fourth was Crystal, and fifth was Colin Spencer. But the night belonged to Iweb, who took away a brand new car valued at 125,000 Barbados dollars, among other prices. Continues in Antigua and Barbuda, which is winding up the first day of two days of carnival. Early Monday morning, King Zakari dethroned his daughter, Queen Thalia, to become the 2017 Calypso monarch. Zakari, who is no stranger to winning the competition, said this latest victory is for the entire family. His rendition of Descendants of Uncle Tom and Carnival Anniversary 60 were well received by the crowd and stole the hearts of the judges. Second position went to Stumpy with Gaston Computer and Like in the Time of Jesus. Queen singing Althea took the third spot with Caribbean Wake Up Call and turn on the light. The carnival celebrations in Antigua will wrap up on Tuesday with the parade of the bands. And ahead in Newsline Sport, two of Jamaica's top track stars react to their shocking losses at the IWF Championships. Do stay with us. Sport is next. Are you missing out? Hmm. It's the summer of 60. Up to 60% off accommodations, travel, tours, and special deals. Plus, the music, the party, the vibes, the celebration of the 60th carnival. It's the summer of 60. Yeah! Love Antigua and Barbuda. Antigua and Barbuda. The beach is just the beginning. Take advantage of these special deals. Go to visit AntiguaBarbuda.com for more info. Do you want a real Barbadian experience with peace and tranquility? A home away from home feeling? Come and stay at Best E Villas. We offer two amazing locations to choose from, Prospect St. James or Christ Church. Plan a staycation for your anniversary, birthdays, summer or winter breaks, or any special event. Best E Villas is located in close proximity to our lovely beaches. Call us now at 246-425-9751 or visit us at bestevillas.com and make your booking for the best in villas. Sprint legend Usain Bolt admits he may have put himself under too much pressure when he competed in his final individual event at the IWF World Championships in London over the weekend. In what was a big shocker for Jamaicans and fans worldwide on Saturday, Bolt had to settle for his first ever bronze in the 100 meters, crossing the finish line in 9.95 seconds behind 21-year-old American Christian Coleman, who finished in 9.94 seconds to take silver, and Justin Gatlin, who beat Bolt for the first time winning gold in 9.92 second bold was understandably disappointed at losing his last individual race a little bit disappointed but it is what it is i came out here and i uh, did my best as always i tried my best so what can i say i think i put a little bit of pressure on myself because I, I knew if i didn't get my start and get into the race early i'll be in trouble and i think i might have played that through my head a little bit too much and uh when i got out i was like oh after work and um, I just tried my best to get back in the race as quickly as possible but at the end it wasn't enough. And despite not going out in a blaze of glory, Bolt said it was hard to be sad given the energy the crowd had given him and he says his legacy remains intact. Proven to the world that um, I'm one of the greatest athletes and uh, I don't think tonight has changed anything, you know what I mean? I've always done my best and I've always tried to, to uplift the sport in my best ways. 
Bolt still has a chance to win another gold to add to his collection as he will compete in the men's 4 by 100 meter relay on Saturday. And the other shock for Jamaica was that of Elaine Thompson, who finished fifth in the women's 100 meter final. And like the rest of the world, she's still searching for answers to the question, what happened? The double Olympic champion said she had not suffered any injury. She said it was a tough field and the race just did not go as planned. American Tori Bori won the race in 10.85 seconds. Mary Josie Talou of the Ivory Coast took silver after crossing the finish line in 10.86 seconds. And the bronze went to Dutch woman Daphne Chippers. Honestly, I don't know what's happening. I've just got back and watched that replay. I stumbled and I tried to get it back. Did not get in the format I wanted to do. I did not try to panic. Just going to the whole my farm and go through. Even though this mission wasn't accomplished, but still I just have to give God thanks. It was a long season. Buckling this Hackley's injury and it was a part of this game tonight. I came out here brave, strong and ready to go, but it didn't happen so I have to just continue, just work hard. This, this defeat is going to push me even harder and work, help me to work harder, so I have to just continue to finish my mission. Thompson had her way in the 100 meter for the last two or three years, suffering just three losses in the previous 34 races before Sunday night's final. Jamaican 4x400 meter world championship bronze medalist Rika Hilton has been cleared of an alleged doping violation by an independent anti-doping panel. The Jamaican Anti-Doping Commission, JADCO, had claimed that Hilton, who was part of the team that came third at the 2011 World Championships, failed to submit a sample requested by a collection officer in April 2016. But after a three-day hearing, the three-member anti-doping panel ruled that JADCO had not discharged its burden, providing that Hilton committed a doping violation under Article 2.3 of the JADCO rules to the comfortable satisfaction of the panel. 28-year-old Hilton had been professionally suspended since February 2017. He is the second high-profile ruling to go against JADCO in recent times. In June, Commonwealth 400 meter hurdle champion Spencer was also cleared by the independent anti-doping disciplinary panel of charges that she had refused to provide a sample for testing. Barbados Trident's captain Kieran Pollard struck an explosive half-century, but it was not enough to save his side from a 12-run defeat to reign in champions Jamaica Talawas in the Caribbean Premier League on Sunday. Chasing 155 for victory in the second game of a doubleheader at the Central Broward County Regional Park, Trident's were dismissed for 142 of their 20 overs, with Pollard smashing 62 of 33 deliveries. Opener Dwayne Smith gathered a slow 20 of 33 balls, but he was the only other batsman to pass 20 as the Trident's innings collapsed around Pollard. Pakistan seamer Mohammed Sami was the best bowler with 4 for 12. Talawas had earlier raised 154 for 3 of 20 overs with Andre McCarthy top scoring with 60. Bangladeshi left-hander uh, hammering an unbeaten 44 and opener Lyndall Simmons stroking a patient 30. Pakistan left arm pacer Wahab was the best of the Trident's bowlers with 3 for 32. Opting to bat Talawas against lost Sri Lankan star Kumar Sangakara cheaply when he was brilliantly taken for 12 by New Zealander Kane Williamson of fast bowler Ravi Rampal with the score of 14 in the second over. But McCarthy then held the innings together in a knock that required 44 deliveries and included three fours and three sixes. He put on 51 for the second wicket with Simmons and after Wahab snatched three wickets in the 11th over four balls apart to leave the innings tottering on 65-4-4. The right-hander added 48 for the fifth wicket with Shakib to give Talawas a strong finish. Meantime, in the other game, Captain Chris Gale stroked an unbeaten half-century as St. Kitts and Nevis Patriots picked up their second win on the trot with a narrow four-run victory over Guyana Amazon Warriors. The left-hander in his first season with the Bastet based franchise struck a measured 66 from 55 balls as Patriots tallied a modest 132-43 from their 20 overs. Brandon King was the only other batsman to get among the runs with 39 from 35 deliveries. In reply, Jason Mohammed struck 41 but Amazon Warriors found themselves short at 128 for 8 when their overs ran out. Singh chipped in with 28 and Pakistani Babar Azam got 21. Left arm seamer Sheldon Cottrell finished with 2 for 28 from his 4 overs. But it was a stingy spell from off spinner Mohammed Nabi who took 1 for 18 from his 4 overs and speedster Hassan Ali who finished with 1 for 19 which put the brakes on the Amazon Warriors scoring. 
Cricket West Indies has announced Ryan Maron as new assistant coach with special responsibilities for fielding for the Windies team. The 42-year-old replaces Andre Coley, who was recently named as head coach for the Windward Islands Volcanoes. Maron, who played professionally for Western Province in South Africa, previously worked with the Dolphins franchise in South Africa and the Afghanistan men's team as a fielding specialist. He joins Roddy Eswick and Toby Radford as the assistant coaches on the staff headed by Stuart Law. Maron said, and I quote, This is a massive privilege to be involved in West Indies cricket, and I'm delighted to join the Windies coaching staff. I have followed West Indies cricket over the years as a kid and then as a player and a coach, and I'm just happy to be offered this opportunity to make a contribution as a coach. The game in the West Indies has a great history, and here in this group, we have a young bunch of cricketers who will perform well. I'm also looking forward to working with the ODI and T20 sides as we look to climb back up the ladder in world cricket. End of quote. CWI's director of cricket, Jimmy Adams, said Maron has a vast knowledge of the game and has done some very good work. And as the West Indies prepare for the upcoming Wisden Trophy Test Series in England, he will be a great addition to the coaching staff. And, th and that's the sport. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Caribbean Newsline is brought to you by the Barbados Tourism Marketing Inc. Ready. It's another episode when we out on the road. This is what we love to celebrate, to celebrate. business or promote your event through the services offered by the Caribbean Media Corporation and Carib Vision. Our distribution provides a platform on cable, terrestrial television and websites. We cover carnivals and events from across the region. We can bring your event live and alive to the world. For music makers, program producers, businesses, we can expand your reach to in excess of 2 million households daily. Our other services include news updates to enhance your media products, studio space for program and development. We can facilitate the launch of new products and services and training. Contact us and we will help you unleash your creative ability, develop products and services, and provide the medium to watch them grow. Contact Loretta Skeet at cmccaribbean.com or call her 1-246-467-1044 or 1-246-253-3889. Call and book your carnival or event today. Again, the major developments of this day, Dominique mourns the death of five people whose car plunged over a precipice and into the sea on Sunday. And in sport, Usain Bolt and Elaine Thompson disappointed, but still in high spirits following their shocking IWF championship losses. That's Caribbean Newsline. For news and sport around the clock, log on to cornernews.com. We'll be back here again tomorrow. But from all of us at CMC News, thank you for watching and do have yourselves a good night.